I couldn't possibly mess up more than Rolling Stones, right? Right, K-pop stands? Hi, welcome. My name is Angelina, and today I wanted to do a fun little take on the Rolling Stones, like 200 greatest singers of all time, but turn it into a K-pop version, which I think is going to be equally as controversial. <laughs> But you'll, you'll see, you'll see, you can judge at the end, okay? But yes, today I wanted to share with you my favorite K-pop vocalist of all time, who is the greatest K-pop vocalist, according to me. And at the end, in the comments, we can have an actual battle of who are the actual greatest vocalists in K-pop, but uh, we'll get to that. So if you're interested in them, please keep on watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with friends you don't have. <laughs> So I wanted to do a little bit of an intro first to explain to you what I look for in an amazing vocalist because I've read some of the comments that you guys posted and I feel like you guys are so stuck on who is a technically good singer. I think there are so many technically good singers in K-pop, but for me, a great vocalist is someone who can make you feel emotion. So sometimes technically good is a little boring to me. Like, yeah, you sound great and you're doing everything by the book, but I don't feel anything. And I wanna feel something for once. So with that being said, I do tend to prefer more emotional voices. And I also very much prefer female voices. I don't know if it's because I'm a raging misandrist, but we do have men on this list and we do have SM artists on this list. So before anyone comes for me. I don't know why, but like the female vocalists on these lists tend to make me want to cry. And I, I will not cry for a K-pop boy. I know people are going to get so offended in the comments. I'm not entirely enraging misogynist, misandrist, fuck. Oh my God. <laughs> but that's my big fat disclaimer. If your faves aren't in this list, maybe they're technically good. I just don't, I'm really not drawn to their voices, but stick around and see. I also wanted to make this list kind of like an archive of all of my favorite performances. When I'm in the mood to feel something, when I'm in the mood to listen to amazing vocals, these are the performances that I go to. So I hope you appreciate it. I hope you enjoy it. Maybe you'll discover some singers that you've never heard of before. I'm saying that because a lot of you are fourth gen stands, okay? <laughs> I'm not saying it because these idols are not legendary in their own rights, but you know, some of you became K-pop stands like a year ago. Tell me what you want, tell me what you need. It's so funny that I just got into Talk That Talk and then once it's tried to cancel me for saying twice lip sync. More on that in the next podcast episode, but. So this list isn't in order of anything. It's just all random. So I, I don't think I could make like a best to worst. I think that's a little too much. But the first idol we're going to talk about is Ailey. What kind of vocalist list would this be without Ailey? I remember they used to call her the Korean Beyonce and I would watch that Halo performance so often. It's like I've been awakened. I know people don't love comparisons when you say this person's the Korean so-and-so. <gasps> super random memory. I remember this girl, she was like super tattooed. She went to Korea and did like a documentary series. And she's, and she's like the title of one of the episodes is like, Jay Park is the Korean Justin Bieber. <laughs> and she, she had to change the title, obviously. But like, just what? Justin Bieber? But anyways, I'm only saying that because the Halo cover that she posted, it literally says in the title, Korean Beyonce. But her covers are amazing. That's how I discovered her. Her Whitney Houston cover of The Greatest Love of All. Never to I was gonna say Whitney Houston again for I Will Always Love You, but that's actually originally by Dolly Parton. Parton? I can't get enough of her covers, honestly, even her Alicia Keys cover, If I Ain't Got You. I gotta go, baby. Rather than having specifically an emotional voice, which is what I'm usually more drawn to, I find a lot of power in her voice, and she is able to evoke emotion, of course. And we'll get into those distinctions later, but she really is like one of the few idols that I think can cover a 21 song and do it justice. And she did cover a 21 song at one point. It was like the smallest snippet, but it was aired on SBS, so I'm not sure I can show it. Maybe like a little a little, little snippet, SBS, mind your business. I got like 44, 46 copyright claims from SBS like a year ago, so 
literally go walking and then land. It's like, I know, I know this is probably gonna have to get cut out of the video, but I want to show it anyways. But honestly, this is what I sounded like at K-pop karaoke when I was serenading Audrey. <laughs> So if the clip gets cut out, you can enjoy my vocals, <laughs> fuck. However, I didn't always love her as a vocalist. I always thought like, yeah, she has a great voice. It was one of those instances where yes, she's a technically great singer as far as I know. And as I've mentioned, I tend to prefer more emotional voices than technically good voices, but I feel like she has a, a, a good mix of the two. But anyways, I didn't always love her as a vocalist. I remember when I was younger, I was showing my friend uh, Bohm singing and then Ailey singing and he was like Ailey is so much better than her and I was like oh really <laughs> he was like yeah she's like a technically good singer where Bohm you know sure you love her but her technique is not that great and my god so offended <laughs> I had some beef with Ailey for like a straight week. So that's why when K-pop fans are like actually terrible to me, I kind of I get it. I've definitely gotten into some like unreasonable feuds with people because of what they said about K-pop. So, you know, in a way I get it, but also some of you guys can be really fucking terrible. So of course she has to be on this list. She's amazing, I love her. Surprise, surprise, we have our first SM artist on the list, technically. <laughs> So this is Junsu. He was part of TVXQ, DVSK, or D because they changed to TVXQ when the three members left, right? He was part of DBSK and then him and two other members sued as um and ended up leaving and forming JYJ. That's how I know Junsu because of JYJ. I'll admit I did not listen to DBSK. And I know K-pop stands are like, you need to know every single aspect of a group to ever talk about them. You cannot just casually stand something that's the end of the world. I'm a better fan than you i get it but let me just appreciate this work of art without getting into the without getting into that because jyj's in heaven is not only one of the greatest songs in k-pop but also one of the most emotional k-pop performances i've ever seen <laughs> and if you followed me for a long time you know that i i reference this performance so often because the song is beautiful the vocals are heartfelt and emotional and of course, SM is known for their vocalists. I know this is a JYJ song, but there's no denying that, you know, they were part of SM Entertainment and they were SM vocalists at the core of it all. But anyways, back to Jinsu's voice. It's it's like raspy and it just conveys a lot of emotion. And this JYJ in heaven performance, he just, he just, he just, he <laughs> He just, he's just giving it his all every single time. Like you could watch any In Heaven performance and it's just equally as beautiful. That's what we're missing these days because even if you have a ballad, there's a backup track to the ballad and the voices are super edited. And not that the voices weren't edited back then, but like at least in this performance, just a simple piano accompanying them and it's beautiful. <laughs> Naturally, I'm gonna put Jinsu on this list. Not that I am entirely familiar with all of his discography and all of the performances he's he's done, but I consistently go back to these in heaven performances and I'm always in awe. And I did want to be able to put singers on this list without knowing the extent of everything they've ever done. Otherwise, this list would be so small. However, I will say I literally did ask Audrey to send me SM performances that were so amazing. And she sent me like two lip syncing performances. I was like, Audrey, please. But moving on. So the next artist on this list is Boom. I've seen videos that analyzed her vocals and, you know, they more or less said she wasn't technically good, though she is really great at conveying emotion, which is what drew me to her. Honestly, when I was younger, I didn't even know. I didn't even know if she was technically good or not. I just loved hearing her sing. So I acknowledge that there are people who know so much more about vocals than I ever will. And I'm more than willing to accept when someone says my favorite singer isn't technically good. This is just another instance where passion and emotion are just more important. And it just makes for a really amazing listening experience for me, which is why I have so many examples of my favorite vocal moments of hers. I do want to talk about something really interesting though, however, because when Rosie debuted, 
Everyone was saying that YG made her change her vocal style, all that jazz. And I remember people saying the exact same thing about Boom because, you know, I think there was this cover of We Ride by Rihanna back in pre-debut days where people say she sounded, quote unquote, a little more normal compared to after she debuted with 21, where her vocal style was a lot more stylistic. I don't know how to say it because we also have examples of Rosie pre-debut sounding, quote unquote, more normal and then having a more different voice post debut i don't know if i really hear it with boom but i definitely hear it with rosie but it's not something super shocking to me because like i've mentioned before a lot of sm vocalists they're training with the same people they're training to adhere to these sm vocalist standards right so it's no doubt that a company would prefer certain vocal styles or train their vocalists to sing in a specific way but anyways here's her pre-debut cover of we ride And then you can remember that and compare it to the next clips I'm gonna show you. I just remember now as well more pre-debut songs that she was part of. So she was in Forever With You by Big Bang as well as We Belong Together by Big Bang. I digress, I've always loved her vocals in second gen. She has a unique voice that is quite expressive. I mean, G-Dragon literally said no one does it like boom before he proceeded to remove her from his song. But that's the, besides the point. I also remember when it was announced that she would go on Queendom and she was performing You and I. I remember seeing the thumbnail and the title and I was so scared to watch it. I thought like, you know, what if the magic isn't there anymore? What, you know, my memory of 21 is so far mostly unscathed. Like my last memory of 21 is OT3, which isn't the best memory to have, but the song is still amazing. Goodbye. I'm just scared when these idols that I loved so much back then have maybe a potential comeback or, or try to re revive something that doesn't need to be revived. So I was scared to watch her performance, but then I watched it and it made me cry. So she's on my cry list for sure. Honestly, even Queendom 2 made me cry quite a bit with Hyorin and Minyoung. But other performances that I absolutely have to mention are, of course, her acoustic covers. So she did Don't Cry. It's okay, baby, please don't cry. And on the same day, they filmed like a more raw cover of You and I. And it was just, it was just, you know, she was like, she got up and like sat somewhere else and it wasn't like super professional or anything, but it was still beautiful in my opinion. However, I did really want to mention this kind of raw version of Ugly that they did. But Ciel's voice too, it's just so smooth and so beautiful and it does really evoke emotion, especially with the content of the song. When that song first came out, I remember watching the music video and just crying because I was like, it just expresses it in such a simple way raw way like i think i'm ugly and nobody wants to love me like you you can't you can't misinterpret that what kind of list would this be if i didn't include the best vocalist of fourth gen of course we have jongo from 80s his vocals legit got me into 80s i remember seeing their 2019 mama performance and i thought wow like this 30 year old man is literally giving it <laughs> I swear to God, I thought he was at least like 28. I thought, like, I don't know why. But it's so interesting to think back of your first impressions of a group. That could be a fun video. I think I've seen it before, but just like what your first impressions were of a group and individual members compared to what you think of them now. I had 80s all wrong. <laughs> I didn't even want to watch the performance, but again, 18s were just like, you better, did you watch their mama performance? You should watch their mama performance. So I was like, oh, fine, I'll watch it. And then I did, and I didn't look back. I've been an 18 ever since. Yeah, I loved that performance. And I'm a shitty second gen stan because I didn't even know they were covering a shiny song. <laughs> All I heard was Goodbye Baby by Miss A and BTS Blood, Sweat and Tears. And there were people like, why didn't you talk about the fact that they covered a shiny song? I was like, I didn't know. <laughs> I stopped listening to Shiny in 2012 after the mess that was Sherlock, but you know, none of my business, right? We think back to this cover of Still I'm Here from the OSC of Crash Landing on You. I'm still, and, I'm here. and of course we have to mention him singing while breaking open apples. Mandela, so, so. 
man cracks me up in this clip. I think he sounds amazing in AT songs. Like, he's definitely one of the highlights that I find in AT songs. Which, on that note, I wish we did have more examples. I know there's so many compilations that, and you can literally just sit there and listen to AT songs to, to, to feel his voice. However, I just wish he would do more covers, and I say this specifically because I've been dying since I discovered AT's, I've been dying to hear him perform JYJ's in heaven. <laughs> like, we just mentioned that song. Can you imagine him singing it? <gasps> I could die happy. Strangely, I also think his voice would fit so well into TVXQ's Catch Me. I know I just said I don't listen to TVXQ. That's the only TVXQ song I know. But anyways, there's also this clip of him singing to a cactus. Which, by the way, Be With You is one of the most beautiful AT songs ever. I'm sorry I don't make the rules. But of course, we had to add Jungle to this list because I love his vocals. Um, on that note, the rats are not going to be happy about this one. Yes, I do have Miss Rosé on this list from Blackpink. And it pains me that I have to make such a big disclaimer because you guys are a bunch of Blackpink aunties. Literally, I got canceled in 2019 for being a Blackpink auntie. And suddenly, blinks have just, have just turned the other eye. Is that a sentence? Turn the other cheek. Where are Blinks? Honestly, I see so much black pink hate in this world and Blinks are nowhere to be found. Suddenly they're gone. I wasn't actually hating on black pink and they harassed me. And yet you guys are letting all this slide. I just, I'm not endorsing any kind of bad behavior. I'm just wondering where they went. Cause someone in the comments wrote like, all of Blackpink, which obviously I don't think all of Blackpink deserved to be on the best vocalist list. But the responses were literally like, no one in Blackpink has a good voice. Everyone in Blackpink are terrible singers. <laughs> I was just like, shit, if I put Rosie on this list, I'm gonna get torn to shreds. I mean, personally, I love Rosie's voice and I even do love Jenny's voice as well. But ultimately, I'm putting Rosie on this list. I mean, we can, you can fight me later, I don't know. Did I really chase all the Blinks away from my channel? Who are you guys actually fans of? I'm curious though, cause Blinks have, Blinks have left the premise. So for Rosie, I find her solos just don't do her voice justice. I don't know what happened because I fell in love with her. She became my bias because of these like sit down acoustic performances that she would do randomly. Like when she sang Winners Really Really. Right away, really, 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 really. That's what I fell in love with. Other examples include when she was with all the members singing You and I and Lonely. Baby, I'm so lonely, 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 lonely. And it just, her voice is just so, so smooth. I think they, they say it's like singing in cursive. And not together make a song and I mean, even outside of all that, of course, she has an amazing voice. Do you remember when she sang Irreplaceable by Beyonce? Everyone's covering Beyonce. Again, this is another SBS clip. So I don't know if I can put it in here. I might put like a little, a tiny little clip. SBS, mind your business. Don't tell on me in the comments, guys. No comments about SBS. I think she has a beautiful voice. I love her voice. Like her parts in Blackpink songs. Chef's kiss. But yeah, she's on this list. <laughs> And I'm fully prepared to get torn apart because I said Pink Venom was Saudi and it didn't go over so well with everybody. <laughs> Last but not least, we have Hyorin from Sistar. Her voice literally makes me cry. I remember watching Queen Num 2 and like her vocals would just like make me emotional. Every like couple of months, I don't know why, I'll get like really emotional. Like <laughs> yesterday, I was literally crying because Lisa performed in Bangkok. Well, Blackpink performed in Bangkok, right? But everyone was posting about Lisa like Thailand's princess or like the queen of Thailand and I got so emotional. And I was like, Thailand must be so proud of her. I don't know why, I've never been to, th I don't, I don't know why that was touching me, but I would just felt so inspired. <laughs> Same with Hyunin, I guess during Queen Nim 2, it was just very emotional and her voice kept making me want to cry. So I'm really glad she got to have that experience and like show everybody what an amazing second gen vocalist she is. I mean, into, in, into fourth gen as well, but you know what I mean. She just has the most hauntingly beautiful voice, not only when she's just sitting there and singing, but also when she's singing and dancing. Like this is a performance that I reference all the time because it's really what fourth gen should sound like. No. There are very few idols that can like compete with, like 
there are very few idols who could sing side by side with her and not get outshined. She literally had a sister subunit with Bora, and Bora had like no lines. It was all hidden. <laughs> And then there was this meme going around a while back where they're singing Touch My Body. I think it was So You Singing. And then Hyodin came and was like singing perfectly. And people were like making fun of the difference and everything. So there's very few people who can sing side by side with her and not get outshined. Yeah. Except for Ailey. So they've done a couple of collabs together. You know, for Disney musicals, within the movie itself, let's say Frozen, Idina Menzel sings Let It Go, right? But then they released that main song by a different artist. So, you know, Demi Lovato saying Let It Go and like the end credits? I don't fucking know. Hyorin saying Let It Go. Not in the movie, but the post movie? Fuck, I don't know what. Is she saying Let It Go, okay? Which she performed with Ailey and they just, they don't outshine each other and I love it. Which they also did a cover of Bang Bang, so. But yeah, those are my top vocalists in K-pop ever. When I'm in the mood to feel something, when I'm in the mood to listen to some amazing vocals, I go to these performances. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Okay, now that all the mean people are gone, cause I know people are gonna be like, you didn't mention this singer, you didn't mention that singer. I know, okay? And if you're gonna be mean about it, then you don't deserve to hear me talk about them. So if you made it this far, there's still more to this list. It's not my list anymore, but you know, singers that I acknowledge should be on like the greatest K-pop singers of all time. We have to mention Wendy. So I have been known to be a red velvet auntie, I'll admit that. But I've been kind of getting into their songs and most notably, I've been watching some of Wendy's just like V-Live performances. Again, I love when artists are just Raw. What like a buttery smooth voice she has. It's stunning. It's beautiful. It's literally so ethereal. So it's so sad to see as I'm forcing her to lip sync right, left, and center. <laughs> it's I literally I'm gonna cry about it. And of course we have to mention Jung Yeon from Shiny. I was so young when I stand Shiny, so it's not that I never recognized that he had a nice voice. It's just I didn't really I didn't really think much about it. I think it was pretty short-lived, my love of Shiny. But no, it sounds so amazing. It's kind of like raspy in a way, but I love especially when he's like growling into his vocals. A lot of people did, of course, mention Pekyun from EXO. Not that I don't like his voice. I just, I'm not really drawn to it. Same for Taeyeon as well. Amazing, technically great voices. They're just not what I'm drawn to. Though I will mention EXO's What Is Love, which is basically Dio and Pekyun together. Amazing song, amazing voices. So of course, I'm acknowledging Pekyun and Taeyeon. Though I will admit, I just don't, I don't know the extent of their, their performances well enough Either. You know, obviously I stand 21, so I watched everything they did. So I can reference all these beautiful memories, all these beautiful vocal performances, but it's just not the case with some of these idols. So that's why we're mentioning them here. With all my nice people who have continued to watch, I don't know when people need to be humbled though, because <laughs> I'll watch something and I will not comment unless I've understood every single point that that person has made because what if I comment something and they're like well I mentioned that in the video or I actually said this in the video and then I look that's the worst thing that could ever happen to me I look like an idiot so I don't comment on anything unless I know all the facts about it but k-pop stands oh my god they'll literally be like you're shit because you didn't say this and I was like I did in the video I actually did or they'll they'll misinter they'll cut me out of context and be like I can't believe you said that it's like well I didn't. So we'll we'll see we'll see how many people get angry. We'll see. And then of course we have to mention IU. I do have a memory of IU though. In Dream High, she covered Genie with Suzy and Taekyung. I don't remember the other guys to be honest. It was so beautiful. I'm literally the guy at the end crying because Genie is just such a beautiful song. So yeah, that is officially the end of this list. So thank you so much. 
much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with friends you don't have. You can also join my channel members by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button. These are the lovely individuals who help support my channel on a monthly basis. It means the world to me. Thank you so much. As for me, I'm going to get going, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye.